one of the most powerful and highly correlated attributes that are related to success is clarity and understanding of what you want and how to get it. This is something that drives me crazy sometimes when talking to coaching clients and people on free coaching calls. I had a recent call uh, just today with a client and you know if you if you're listening to this I love you man so uh, no, no n- nothing personal but you know he's like a really cool guy entrepreneurial uh, personality style very similar to mine and the gist of what we talked about was this in the beginning he says I've been building a website and working on it a lot and it's been you know, it's been pretty hard to concentrate on it, but I've been doing it and I've built a business plan and I need to sit down and write marketing scripts and basically like a lot of work. And again, if I just say the gist of what happened, the summary is I ask him, okay, but do you know currently the the sales process, like the actual process in which you're going to sell to people? And he's like, no, I have no idea. So he's been working tirelessly and thinking tirelessly about this thing, you know, about building up his business and, and, and attaining customers. So he's been working on the means, but he doesn't even know how to get to the end. And I find this in so many different niches and topics and just, it's, it's like a flawed manner of thinking. It's something so simple yet so devious. Like you get somebody who wants to get better uh, in fi- in his fitness, you know, to be healthier, uh, look better, build muscle. He just goes to his gym and just starts lifting shit, like without reading, without learning, without getting a mentor, without getting a coach, trainer. It just starts and and you know, tons of effort. You know, goes every day. But, but he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know how to actually get to his goal. And it's like we've been brought up this way. I swear to God, this is the way it looks to me. It looks like we've been brought up. Like, don't question it. Don't think of the, the means. Just think what, about what you want and don't question it. Don't start asking, how do you get there? Just, just think about what you want and maybe move towards there. But do not ask how to get there. And it's... It's, it's dumbfounding. It's dumbfounding to me that a person can invest his time and effort moving somewhere before figuring out how to get there. Now, I'm not talking about extremely complicated cases. Like, I'm not obviously talking about Elon Musk moving forward ambivalently, uh, you know, trying to get people to colonize Mars, okay? And even for that, he has the best councils, council in the world. So <laughs> even there, he's stocked with knowledge to the best of human ability. But I'm talking about regular day-to-day things. You know, you want to get more money, you want to get rich, you want to become more fit, you want to find the right partner, you want to have a good relationship. How can you do something? How can you do anything in life without, with the excuse that you, you don't know what you're doing? Like there's so many books on every topic you can imagine. There's so many people peddling and, 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 and pushing you to buy their course or buy their book or get mentorship from them. There's so many, so much free advice on the internet. There's forums. Like, how can you say, I don't know? So make a list. Make a list of everything you're currently doing in your life, everything that you spend time doing, even the bad things that you can't manage to get rid of, you know, the bad habits. So start ask, saying, what, what am I doing with my life? Okay, I'm spending this much time. Uh, working out. I'm spending this much time in school. I'm spending this much time on my business or thinking about opening a business. I'm spending this much time in my job. I'm spending this time, this much time smoking, which I want to get rid of, but I don't know how. I'm spending this much time eating this type of food and literally just have a list. Know every single thing that you're doing in your life and now start dividing it into levels of competence. Like how much do you actually understand about how to do what you're doing? What is the best way to do it? And 
what results would that create? Like, what are the most uh, important uh, ways in doing it? What's distinctions you should know? Maybe the process, how, how can it, done, it be done better? Who are the pros in it? No, have information, you know, have knowledge, have understanding, have clarity. You know, when you eat, you should know what you're putting in your body. You should know every single ingredient that you're putting in your body. And maybe not, you know, by heart completely, but at least know if it's good or bad <laughs> or, or what it does, you know, in the, the basic level. Be able to identify it, you know. Like you get, um, you know, for example, you put sugar, Okay. You put sugar in your body and, and, you know, you just simply research sugar. So, oh, apparently when you put more than 30 grams of added sugar, which, by the way, Americans on average put, put 200 grams of added sugar a day, uh, you put 30 grams of added sugar a day, you increase your risk, your risk of diabetes uh, and other chronic illness by 30%. But, but you don't know because you never read it, you never checked, you know, or you... You know, in the gym, like, do you know how to actually grow muscle? Like, have you actually researched it? And I don't mean, uh, you know, read some uh, ebook by this uh, so and so trainer. I mean, the actual science. Like, do, did you actually learn the science of uh, of of uh, progressive uh, overload of you know getting your muscles bigger? Uh, do you know how much you should eat? Uh, do you know the sense of sleep? How much you should be sleeping? How you should be sleeping? What about relationships? Have you ever read a book about relationships? Oh, you're not in a relationship? Well, have you ever considered going to a dating consult consultant? Have you ever considered reading a book about approaching men or women? It it's what you don't know that kills you. <laughs> like, And then there's the, the that feeling like, like you don't want to learn it and i know that feeling again because i'm human and just like you and i i and then i get that too i know that feeling i know what it means but if you think about it rationally like you're going to be doing this activity anyway like let's say you're alone and you're you know no nobody likes you you don't have a partner or you know not getting late or whatever you like no i don't want to face it i don't want to deal with it so i'd rather not think about it and you know now read how to get better at it cuz then i'll have to recognize the problem but but look you're still in the problem like you don't have to recognize uh the fact that you're clogging your arteries in order to have a heart attack you know the problem acknowledges itself to you very fast so you know you know it's really rational like you can't escape your problems might as well deal with them anyway and the, the coolest thing about it is when you attack a problem or more appropriately when you confront or challenge a problem by choosing to face it so you know preemptively or or proactively the parts of your brain that get triggered are different than when you have to challenge a problem because you have no choice. So let's say you, know, you see somebody who's attacking people around you, just as a wild example. If you choose to then c come up to that guy and, and beat him or, or defend yourself, again, in a very choose, but basically just choose to, to take an action, then you'll be much more effective than if you react because you hesitated and then that person came up to you because then the parts of the brain that will be activated will be mostly related to anxiety, retreat, and emotions. Whereas if you proactively choose to deal with it, the parts that will be activated are related to courage and to exploration. So that's a really, really cool and important distinction. So Take that list of activities that you do, and again, sleep also counts. Really kind of study where your competency, competency lies within each one of them. Um, the thing is, even if you don't think one of them is important, like let's say you don't have a lot of competency in the, in the whole sleep thing, so you don't really know how sleep works, what are the effects of sleep, 
that doesn't mean that sleep is not important. So just because you have very low competency in something and you assume that it's not important, that doesn't mean it's true because, again, that's categorically, that, that's the definition, where by not understanding it, you don't really know how much effect it has. Like, imagine somebody who doesn't really know a lot about nutrition and he thinks, yeah, yeah, you know, just put food in your mouth, you know, avoid junk food, try to eat fruits and vegetables. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And he doesn't really know the nuances of how food affects you, you know, cholesterol, things like that, how to actually measure these things, what effect they have on you long term. He won't appreciate how important his lack of acumen in food is. So I hope this uh, topic makes sense. Don't go into anything without first attaining at least the basic level of competency. So again, if you're going to go in the gym, uh, get a coach or read books or you know any sort of way apart from just experience, uh, and, and then come from come at it from competency. And the more you do something, the more hours you spend doing something, or the more important something is to you, uh, the more urgent it is that you start developing competency. And it really doesn't take a lot. Like the most easiest way to do it is to find statistics because I, I found that when you look at statistics, that's where you find the deepest and most simple truths at the same time. For example, if you look at sales statistics, so I think about 10% of the of sales are closed in the first call um, or first, first and second call and then the 5% in the next three, four calls. And then 80% or 85% are closed in the fifth call onward. So you literally, with one statistic, you learn that most sales are closed on the fifth or further follow-up call. So if you're not, you, you whoa, like, wait. So that means, you know, I can increase my closing rate by four or five times if I just make more than five follow-ups? Yes, <laughs> that's statistics. That's what's cool. Uh, and so you learn these these uh, statistics and, you know, you just research on Google like fitness statistics, gym statistics, food statistics, sales statistics, business statistics, college statistics, everything you need to know, or at least the the foundation of what you need to know will be revealed through numbers and you know you need to know what to search but that is a great way to start and I really wish you the best with doing that because man like if you don't do that you're not effective you don't have any clarity you're confused it's horrible like like get that standard like start having that standard that you will not move forward before you understand at least the basics and will save you a lot of time and more importantly a lot of effort that's wasted so i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you very soon